So I'm going to show you here how to set up a Flutterwave account in order to receive payments. What I really like about Flutterwave is that you can put the value of your transaction, so whatever you want, in to different currencies. So for example, you know, if you're sending it to South African businesses or customers, you're going to use the RAND, the ZAR, and if you're going to be sending it to the US, you can use the US dollar. So that is one of the best things about Flutterwave and setting up a merchant account that way. And the other thing that I really think is nice about it is that you can send direct links that people can literally just click on the link in their WhatsApp or their text or their email and they will be able to pay you immediately. It's so simple. So let me show you how to create an account. You go to flutterwave.com and select create account. And here you're going to be setting up all your information. Now, I'm going to do this on behalf of an NGO, WCF. So I'm first of all going to write the full name of the owner or the founder or the director. You decide whose name it's going to be in. Your trading name, the email address, the country that your business is based. How did you hear? If you've got a referral code, then put it in here. If you haven't got one, then you can use my one. It is RV814669. And then choose a password that you're going to remember. Obviously, you're wanting at least eight characters with letters, numbers, and symbols. You can view it and acknowledge that you've understood the terms and conditions. You can simply click on this link here that will take you to the terms and conditions. Once you've read it, just acknowledge that you have and get started. Okay, now you're going to have to make sure that it is you. So you will have to go into your email now and simply click on the link within the email in order to progress further. The email verification is to ensure that the email you gave is in fact your email. So within the email, you will have a button that says confirm email address. Just tap on that. And now you need to decide whether you're going to accept payment as an individual. So if you're a sole trader, for example, uh, you're your name trading as something or as a registered business, a PTY or as an NGO, an NPO or specifically for events. So I'm going to show you one here now as an NGO. So I select NGO and I continue to the dashboard. It's a good idea at this stage to explain that you need several different documents to make sure that you pass compliance. So I'm listing them here. Stop the video, make sure you get these documents and then continue with your application. On this dashboard, you will see over here on the left hand side, there are so many different functionalities that we can use. And I'll go through each of these sometime with you. But basically, you will have your trading as name over here, what people will see when you send a link to them and your merchant ID. That's your unique ID for your business. And now you're going to have to enter details of the person who you made as the founder or the person who is the director or the owner of the business. You don't have to write the country prefix here. To verify your phone, you will need to enter the one-time PIN sent to you. Okay, and now you're going to carry on with the bank that you currently bank with. If you have a corporate account number or what your account number is, account name, and then your SWIFT code. The SWIFT code is a standard format and it's used generally when there are international transfers. You can find the SWIFT code easily just by Googling the bank and the address of the bank. Okay, so once the bank account has been saved, it's going to let you know. Now you need to add in the rest of the details. Okay, so once we've got a green tick, it means that everything's okay. And the orange tick means you still need to complete the information. So you enter your business address, you enter the website address, and you say what your business does. If you don't have a website address, you can just use your social media address. For example, your Facebook or your Instagram or your LinkedIn. Okay, it's going to ask you for your company's registration number. Obviously, this is not applicable in the case of an NGO or an NPO. You are going to need to upload an ID or a passport of the person who you wrote as the founder or owner and any other relevant document. So 
So here I would add in the proof of address and proof of bank account. So you need to make sure that you've got an attachment for each of these sections in order for the section to be complete. Now this will take you straight to your dashboard and I will go through each of these here, but essentially you are now live. You can accept payments, but it still hasn't been verified yet. So if you send a link to someone now, it's not going to necessarily allow them to pay, even though it says you are live. I want to show you quickly now how if you go on the left hand side here, you can set up payment links. OK, so it automatically defaults to giving you a link. If I view this link over here, it will look like this. When you send this link to someone who you're requesting payment from or asking for payment for, they'll be able to enter their name, their surname, their email address, and then the amount that they wish to pay and they click pay. It is this easy. It will then take them to a place where they can upload their bank card. Um, let me just show you quickly. Okay, here I'm asking for it in rands, but like I showed you earlier, you can actually ask for it in any currency. So if I wanted to ask for uh, pounds, I could change it to GDP. And if I wanted to ask for it in dollars, I can also change it to US dollar. Obviously, we're within South Africa at the moment. I'm keeping it to the czar and I'm going to select pay. Okay, the person who's going to pay you will now be directed to this screen, whether it's on their phone or their computer, and they can simply enter their card number, the valid date and the CSV or the CVV number and then they can click pay. It is that easy. So I'm going to show you also how you can create a new payment link. So if I say create a payment link on the right hand side, I click that button. It now gives me three options. There is the single charge, which is what we've just seen here. There is a subscription page or a subscription link, which means that people can pay you an X amount per month or there is a donation page. Because we are currently looking at donations because of what's happened in KZN, I'm gonna select that one and you can title it what you want. Say they are looking for donations from the US. They're allowing this to be an empty field so that the user, the person who's paying can put their own amounts in now you can select a background image if you want, and I'll show you how. Okay, you just simply drag and drop it and it uploads. Okay, and you can also have a website. So once they have gone and paid, you know, where is it going to go to? I'm not going to put one here right now, and then you can have a phone number. So I'm going to say, this is the phone number that customers can use to reach people. OK, so let's have a look at what that link looks like. So you can see that there's the logo in the background. It's a plea for donation. Um, please help restore our building for our people. Uh, you can say monthly or give once. So when this link is sent to someone, whether it's on their phone or whether it's on the web interface, they can just put their name and their surname, the email address and the amount they wish and then click donate. It's that simple. I'm going to show you what this link looks like when you share it on um, the mobile device. So I can either select this here and copy and paste it or I can go over here and copy link. Paste it over here. Now I can pick that up on my phone. This is what it looks like on my phone. I can now donate any amount and it gives me the phone number on the top right hand side there. It's that simple and then obviously you can share this in any way you wish to. That is how you set your account up and within 24 hours usually they will have to validate your documents and then you'll be able to accept payments.